All right, y'all. So Dima has actually changed the game forever. I actually said this in my own reaction when I was watching episode one over on the channel. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't seen that reaction yet and check it out. It, it was crazy. It was crazy actually seeing how they went with the storyline and how they took it because I love this angle. This is an angle where they're now younger and I feel like they could become stronger than ever before simply because it doesn't look like they lost their experience and the skills and all the stuff that they had. So like imagine a younger Goku out here putting out the spirit bomb and things like that and he can get even stronger. He has time to, you know, perfect his skills and craft even more and become even more powerful because now they're, they're young. So they have to get to adults again. So now they, they start off in their primes and they become, you know, grown and they're going to perfect it even more and more and hit new primes and hit new highs. I feel like you're going to be able to see new powers all around if, if it continues down this path where it doesn't look like they've lost their memories or anything, but they're, they're still young enough to, you know, train, get better and improve. So let's see what, what this video is going to be about. Let's see what they're going to say in some of their opinions. But yeah, let me know what you all think. Um, hopefully, um, this, this is like, this is some, some sick madness that goes on here with the anime. I'm very excited to see what direction they take it in in episode two. But yeah, let me know your, th your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let's get it. After years of cooking, Toriyama's masterpiece is here. Stop the cap. Okay, okay. I know, even though Toriyama stated he had put more effort into this series than usual, a lot of us were still doubting the whole concept. Like, we already had GT. So why do the whole Kid oh, Goku yeah. theme again? But episode one of Daima makes it make sense. Dragon Ball Super being set four years after the events of Z left a small gap in between. And so this is where our story starts. Literally a couple of months to a year after the death of Kid Buu at Trunks' birthday party. He's turning nine years old. And so they need to celebrate it. But whilst the gang does so, we are introduced to the demon realm. Contrary mm. to Super, which although canon, is very much a separated part of the franchise. Whereas Daima is already a lot more of a continuation. The Boo Saga was actually more than just about him. Rather, it was an insight to the mortal enemies of the Kais, being the Margins, aka yep. Demons. In fact, the Demon World has been talked about by Toriyama very briefly, but never really shown in its entirety. You may think that Hell is the same thing, right? Well, not exactly. Hell is not the demon. Bro, and the demons is nothing to play with, bro. My man's came, he came from the demon realm. But but to be fair, the way that they were scared seeing Goku and Vegeta and all this power, it it seemed like they probably weaklings. Like they they was kind of nervous and kind of shook, bro. But then you see um the the freaking Namek dude come in, come in and just get all the Dragon Balls on the planet with ease. It's like, bro, they got power like this. Why were they scared, bro? And then they treating him like he a nobody. They treating the Namek like he ain't nothing or something. And he got that type of power. So if they don't think that that's impressive, if they think that that's nothing, why, like, why? Like, it was, it was kind of, it was kind of confusing, man. It was kind of confusing because at some points they looked like the, the demons was looking like they was weak. At other points, they just look insanely powerful. So, yeah, I, I, I'm actually excited to see where where it goes from here, but th it looks like it's actually going to be lit. I'm a huge fan of Daima. I don't I don't think it's a bad um anime at all. I don't think that they've actually done a bad job with this at all. Demon realm, they are two completely separate entities. The demon realm is a mirror of the known universe, separated from the lights of the other world, Earth, and all the other universes. Hence, why the Kai's could never access it. It was totally shut off to them. Mm. However, a key note is that we did manage to see a glimpse into it, where in the original Dragon Ball anime, Kid Goku finds an entrance to it when he confronts Shula to save Princess Misa. This was through a gate that. Shula opened, but Goku soon sealed it after he won the battle. However, despite the Supreme Kai struggling to access this realm, it is possible. From the get-go, Goku was inspired by Wukong, who himself was a demon that became a demon hunter. Toriyama Eesh. sprinkled aspect of its lore with Demon King Piccolo representing them. Remember that back in Dragon Ball, we were told that to become a guardian of Earth, Kami had to purge all the evil energy within. He succeeded by separating the evil nature from himself, but 
this created the being known as Demon King Piccolo. Piccolo had an extremely dark energy compared to anything we have seen before, and he was able to create demonic offspring. Now, I remember this is that. Not a normal ability for most Namekians, meaning that being pure evil gave him powers that shouldn't have been possible. Something similar yeah. took place with Fat Boo when there were two sides fighting for control, one evil and one good. The yeah. evil side felt more malicious and sinister, likely being similar to this dark energy and dark form mentioned in Heroes. All of this gives the premise of evil versus good, demon versus gods, where they are on the opposite side of the spectrum. However, a key point to note is that the demon realm, though represented by evil, is not necessarily evil in itself. In reality, it's just another realm. With yeah, I saw, um, because you saw the, well, the sister she was crazy she you know she was plotting she was trying to get her way and stuff like that you know women they be conniving trying to you know stir things up she's the whole reason that they went after the freaking um the the saiyans anyway but uh, there was that kid in the demon realm who was actually listening to what was going on and i want to see what role he plays because he seems like he might be on the side of the um the heroes so it, it'll be interesting to see if if he actually goes there and tries to warn them and things like that because i feel like that's probably what he's going to do he's going to do something and be be on the, the good side so yeah I'm, I'm interested i'm interested in seeing how that goes its own denizens morality science and dark source of power also the idea of whether Zeno created this realm can also be questioned as you know the super dragon balls were made by Zorama whose power seems to rival Zeno's like it did bring back the deleted universes that he had erased episode mm. one of Daima also reveals that the Namekians were originally from the demon realm and had migrated to the outside world which could mean that Zorama originated from here as well as if you follow the theory that this dragon deity is in fact the forefather of all Namekians with that said the demon realm being uncreated or you know outside of Zeno's control does make sense when we consider that Boo was in existence from time memorial even predating universe 7's creation mm. but boo isn't the only margin as from this realm we have others like bibidi barbody and king darbada in fact the story of daima revolves around their defeat as with darbada's death the position of king is now open for our main antagonist goma to take but like with most bad i mean he just got it handed to him so easy i don't even think he'd like that he probably would have never made king by himself i don't feel like he's strong enough but i feel like they also gonna shock us with some stuff that he can do but the way that he was scared watching that back like i don't know if you that spooked i feel like you probably not that powerful guys there is always a sidekick in goma's case it's dagisu who is revealed to be none other than the supreme kai's shin's younger brother in fact his sister is here too she's running the magical science division and worked very close with dabara now you might be thinking that's very odd why did toriyama condemn shin's sibling to the demon realm aren't they supposed to be gods well this isn't a retcon the supreme kai of time says that the demon realm is is at the end of the universe within this infinitely sized space the demons have their own supreme kai possessing more unique powers like regeneration immense mm. key different transformations and similar magical powers to margin boo wow. they are called ma kaioshin remember guys kais are appointed to their role and are from a race called the shinjins of the core world they get selected by a previous kai to take their position ma kaioshin yeah starts off like an ordinary Shinjin but because they are supposedly born evil they are sent to the demon realm Gamasu should have also been likely sent to this realm but somehow manipulated his way out of it with that said the Kaioshin are stated to be stronger than the Ma Kaioshin meaning they will not be the main enemy in this realm and we can see that with the way Degasu behaves but to be fair even Shin's strength is negligible when compared to the Saiyans the story of Daima highlights this with Shin's sister Dr. Arinsu manipulating the new King Goma to deal with the Z fighters. Arinsu arrives 
arrives at the Demon King's palace to share that her research is going well and to congratulate the new king. But he tells her that since Davara is dead, her research funding will be cut off. Arinsu responds that Gomo has to keep funding her work or else the powerful fighters who beat Majin Buu might invade the Demon Realm, showcasing whatever she is working on can and will be a problem for the Z fighters later on. After she leaves, a worried Goma comes up with a plan to use the Earth's Dragon Ball to turn the heroes into kids. Now it's here we learn about the Demon Realm's very own Dragon Balls, which was cr You could tell how um not well thought out that plan was too because he wasn't really specific with what he was asking for. So you know he wasn't he asked to make them younger without thinking about things like cuz the the um dragon kept asking for more specifics, yo. Like, what age do you want to take them back to? And, and what about the children who's already at the, those ages? What should we do with them? Like, you could tell he didn't think all that through. So he didn't think about, oh, don't just make them young. Remove their memories. Remove their powers and things like that. He didn't go into full detail. So you're going to get what you asked for. And these guys are going to be younger and, and even stronger than they were probably before. So, yeah, that that's kind of, I, I like it created by an OG thousand year old Namekian named Neva and he is still alive living in this realm. Unlike the outside world, these balls uses dark magic and can likely commit evil things. But I guess Neva still had some sense of accountability as to go along with it. He created terrifying powerful beings called the Yamagami mm. to protect these balls. So for the longest time, no one in the demon realm has had a wish granted. However, Neva- So he can sit here and create beings that powerful. He can create Dragon Balls. He create beings that powerful why is he not the king why is like what still decides to work alongside Goma and help him use the Earth's Dragon Balls, which I found quite funny because he agreed to do this all for another thousand years worth of life. Like, couldn't he just wish it for himself or something? Exactly. Because likely time works very different in the demon realm and the king might just have some power over it. Who knows? Regardless, this old smelly Namekian is super powerful as unlike anyone before. He can insta summon the Dragon Balls and even bypass past their cooldown period, turning them back to working condition from stone. This is exactly what he does after they infiltrate the Earth's watchtower and summon Shenron. But to get to Earth in the first place, these demons had to enter the outside world through the mouth of a giant fish. Now I know I could be overthinking things, but when it comes to space and time, Toriyama loves fishes to be a medium, as we have seen with- I think that's an Asia thing, cause the it's been in a lot of anime, they actually have a fish involved in that um but avatar did it as well i, I think that 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 may be something kind of historic to, to that culture because yeah the, the fish is always kind of a thing that's a, that's spiritual and a connection to some type of spiritual world and spiritual realm it's always a fish seems to be involved in that the oracle fish regardless it's here where they can teleport across into the outside universes this is how barbadi and the other demons did so even dr arinsu who was scheming her own little plan however with that said there are some rules to not cross over and even the king has to go through some proper proceedings if he needs to do so but another cool thing we learned is about the three eye clan likely tian's ancestors mm. originally they were demons too and had the evil third eye Bro, is everybody coming from the demon realm? What? Tien's from the demon realm as well? I mean, if he's from the demon realm, why he he not he not like that? But I mean he 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 cool, but come on now. Like compared to you know some of the other people we got here, like what's up? which to the people of Daima is regarded as the legendary Tartian Oculus. It was lost during the reign of Davara's father, the supreme demon king Arboda. This eye is supposedly said to grant the user unbelievable power and long ago it used to be passed down the supreme demon kings. Goma wants to use the second wish of the Dragon Ball to grant him these eyes. With Goma wishing for everyone that fought Buu to turn into children, our heroes will be limited in power and energy. We saw this concept in GT as Goku couldn't even go Super Saiyan 3 easily due to the strain on his little body. Now though Darbada was under Babadi's control, he- Mmm, but will it be the same thing as GT? Or will they go a different route where it, they have even more power from it? Because I'm hoping that they go 
they don't go the oh little strain on more strain on a little body type of route, but they they allow them to keep their max capacity and then extend that even farther. Like I feel like taking the exact same angle as GT probably isn't what's the point of of this then. So yeah, hopefully they you know keep keep their power and can level up to so we can see even more crazy moves and abilities come out and. And this could actually re be something really, really special that we've never seen anything like it before. Was the main demon we saw in Dragon Ball Z. Dabra was said to be the strongest in the demon realm and stated to be more powerful than Cell. This may sound weak now, especially if you compare them to Super Saiyan God, but this is only within the mortals of the demon realm. Gormoth states that the demon realm also consists of three different worlds where there could be more powerful beings. Remember, Janimbe and the race of Boo, you know, all of these other characters. Apart from this, we also have a lot of non canon material covering the demon realm. For starters, you have the Dragon Ball heroes stating that before age 850, the demon realm was sealed away and if it was ever broken, chaos would erupt into the universe. Obviously, this isn't canon, but it, you know, it does give some interesting ideas that could link into Daima. For example, the demon realm apparently has a unique type of dark energy, which is quite similar to what I was mentioning before with Boo and King Piccolo. And when Barbadi gave Vegeta access to this energy, he became a bit stronger. In Xenoverse 2, we also see this world, or at least it's kind of talked about. The reason this place is so dangerous is mainly because our gang's power are nowhere near as effective. It cannot simply brute strength their way through everything like before. Think of Margin Buu. Bro was turning people into chocolates and eggs and had regeneration surpassing anyone in Dragon Ball Z. Actually, if you think about it, even Vegito, one of the strongest characters in the series, was turned into chocolate and likely would have stayed like that if not for him slapping up Super Buu until he turned him back. Then if you fast forward to Dragon Ball Super, we see Buu managing to stand up against Moro. This is because of the unique powers he possesses as a margin, linking into the different energy they possess. Buu was unaffected by any of Moro's attack, including his energy absorption, which led to both Goku and Vegeta near death. My guy was using some of the most ridiculous techniques in the series, which allowed him to beat even a planet eater like Moro, who, mind mm. you, straight top ran away when he got his powers back, still being on edge around Boo. But talking about Boo, Daima at face value seems to have retconned some concepts, like how Shin managed to break free from the Fatora's effects, even after they stated it was a permanent thing. In Super, they explained it with a wish from the Dragon Balls, but now they are saying that they had Boo inhale them and spit them out, proving that Boo's inner gas has magical properties to undo the Fatora's effects. In fact, it was this special magical gas that turned Vegito back to normal. In Super, during the fight against Zamasu, we had learned that Vegito had split back into Goku and Vegeta because of a time limit. And the rings are only permanent with the Kais. Now, don't get me wrong, mm. they can still fix this if Shin and Kibito fuses again by the end of Daima. And then, canonically, the Fatora fusion can be broken down both by the Dragon Balls and Boo's special gas. Daima also added another retcon though, of Krillin saying that Goku used the Dragon Balls to wish for Boo to be a good guy and remain on Earth, which wasn't needed in the original story as he had already become good by separating from his dark side. And then he fought Kid Boo. Now, it just seems like they needed the Dragon Balls to change Boo's nature, which tarnishes all all the work Hercule did. And also, it just mm. goes against the whole concept of evil beings becoming good, like we saw with Piccolo Jr. and even Vegeta. In fact, later on in the series, Goku gets help from a margin called Gloria, meaning that not all margins are pure evil, which makes sense as the evil being... Gloria, I think that was the one that we saw in episode one hiding there listening. That looked like him from the outside world are usually sent into the demon realm but not necessarily everyone born in this realm is supposed to be evil some could be good who knows maybe a lot of them are in fear of the evil ones which is where goku would step in but let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and if you enjoyed this video then make sure to watch this one next yeah this was a great video a lot, lot of information in this one let me know what you all think and how you all feel about it man 
Um, I'm looking forward for episode two. I think that this is going to be very, very entertaining. I can't wait to see the direction they actually go in with this one. Let me know how you all are feeling so far. Be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you stay updated with everything going on here on the channel. And I will catch you all on the next one. Peace out, fam.